Let's take a look at the MIDI drum editor found in Cubase. The drum editor solves a lot of problems in dealing with MIDI drums. For instance, it could be very difficult to determine the groove of your drum part looking at it in a list editor. Velocities can be problematic when looking at it in a key editor. It's hard to determine what the velocity is for my snare versus my hi-hat. So Cubase dedicated a MIDI drum editor, which is found in the MIDI menu, where we could select Open Drum Editor. Here we can see our drum grid with our drum map. And what our drum map is going to allow us to do is to actually see what sound is playing on what particular pitch. If we wanted to activate our acoustic feedback, we can now actually scroll down using the arrow keys on your computer keyboard to listen to the individual sounds. If you wanted to change the sound names, you could just double click, type in your value right there. Now these can be reorganized as well. So if you just grab by the note and drag it down, we can reorganize these. And by default, this will work as a general MIDI map, but you can make your own maps and there's plenty of maps available inside of Cubase as well. So we can see exactly what sound is listed here. And we also see these diamond shapes. These diamond shapes represent the individual MIDI events. Now with drums, it's often not applicable to actually see the length because we're often just having a one-shot sample. So we see the diamonds here. So we get a very clear indication of when events start. Now we also see these events colorized. We have several different coloring options where you could have velocity, pitch, channel, part, all colorized. By default, it'll be set to velocity. And as we have velocity, the redder the notes appear visually, the higher the velocity, and the bluer is the lower the velocity. So if we wanted to go up. Now we have our controller lane here in the bottom. Now what's really handy about this is we only see the velocities for our selected lane. So if I wanted to go down to my hi-hat, I'd only see those velocities. Now how we can edit these velocities is also very simple. As soon as we go into our velocity lane, we can just draw in new velocity curves like this. But let's say I like this velocity curve, but I wanted to just take all these notes and be able to change the proportionality of the velocity. So if I hold down my command or control plus shift, I can now just come right over here and adjust the proportionality so I could increase and decrease but still maintain the velocity curve just like that. Now we also have an info line so if you don't see the info line come to this icon click here and make sure that the info line is checked and but now once you have that done you could also take any of the selected values right there and adjust your proportionality of your velocities. So very easy to work with velocities we can have very powerful quantizing functions because sometimes you may want to have different quantizing for your hi-hat versus your kick or snare. If I hold down my shift key and double click, I could actually select all the events on a single lane. So this way, if I wanted to have different quantizing functions here, say I want this to be uh, quarter note quantizing, I could just simply do this or have different swing factors could just hit Q and have everything quantized independently for each lane. We can use our tools as we're accustomed to, just like we would in other editors. So if I want to zoom in, double click in an empty space will take us back to our zoom level. To mute a range of notes and just use my mute tool and again undo. Or if I wanted to select notes to erase and draw notes in and just have our different tools. And with our pencil tool from other editors has turned into a drumstick. If I wanted to come here, I could actually just draw in different drum values. I could say, okay, let's go to a cowbell. May not be a cowbell sound, but we'll just enter that sound in. Now, we also have a global quantize 
setting. So if I have this set to 30 second notes, which I believe is default, as I would enter in my values, I could enter in 30 second notes. And sometimes this may sound really awful. But we could also be very creative with your velocity. So if you wanted to come here again and just kind of adjust your velocity, you could take something. Now we could also get really interesting results if we bypass the global quantize settings and we see our quantization value set right here. So let's say if I wanted to go to a bongo and have this be an eighth note triplet, I can now come right over here and as I paint in, it'll just be an eighth note triplet and let's say we want that to crescendo and decrescendo. So let me just erase my previous notes here. I enter this in. So very, very easy to have different rhythmic feels. We can do quite a bit with our main drum editor, but we have additional functionality once we actually go to our drum map. I'm going to load up a general MIDI drum map, but we can also load up different drum maps. And our drum maps will give us some additional functionality. So if I once I've assigned this to a drum map, instead of double clicking and launching into the key editor, you could have a preference set under preferences, go to event display, MIDI, make sure you have edit as drums while drum map is assigned. And if you have that checked, when a drum map is assigned, we can now just double click and it would launch directly into our drum editor. Once a drum map has been assigned, we're going to have some other added functionalities that's revealed when you kind of pull this dividing line over to the right. So this will give us a mute as well as I note and O note. So we can think of this as in note, out note. Let's say someone gave you a MIDI file and their kick drum was all of a sudden triggering a ride cymbal on the MIDI note that you had set up for your samples. What you could do instead of changing their notes is you could remap the out note to play a different MIDI note. So very, very powerful for remapping different drum sounds. Independent MIDI channels, as well as we can route to any instrument any MIDI device or any instrument in the VST instrument rack. So this way I can say, I want the uh, snare drum, the kick drum here coming from the Hallion Sonic SE, but I want the hi-hat coming from Groove Agent 3, and I want this sound to come from my Hallion port A on MIDI channel 2. So this way we can map to multiple sounds directly from within one single window to anywhere in our MIDI studio. Once we have all of our routing done, some people may want to break these independent sounds into different tracks. So if we come here to our MIDI part, we have this selected on our main project window. We can go to our MIDI and then we could choose dissolve part. And we could actually say, let's separate pitches hit OK, and now each the kick, snare, hi-hat, all of our different sounds have automatically been broken down to their own individual tracks. So as you can see, working with the MIDI drum editor not only gives you added flexibility, routing options, but really easy ways to make your drum parts come to life.